Right, Triumph Scrambler chain adjustment. It's ever so simple, it really is. Bike's quite new, six months old, it's done 1400 miles. That puts that first initial drop of slack in the chain. It's not wear, not really wear and tear, it's just bedding in. Every chain of sprockets for the first thousand miles will just be bedding in, settling into its sprockets, getting itself all settled and it will drop. It will have an initial bit of stretch, so don't go thinking that it's wearing quicker than it should. Once you've done this first adjustment, you'll probably find a good three or four thousand miles before you really need to adjust it again, depending of course on how you ride and how you lubricate it. And I keep the scrambler on a Scotland all the time, so really it doesn't, it doesn't need much more. Right, this is how you do it. A couple of tools needed, 19mm ring spanner, 24mm socket and a torque wrench. You need a torque wrench because you've got to torque up the wheel axle because that's quite important. I know I don't torque up all the nuts and bolts that I do, but I would say on an axle you should. Uh, and a little 8mm socket just to adjust the actual wheel itself. Okay, so come on over, let's get stuck in. Right, first thing, torque wrench or ratchet onto undo mode on the wheel axle and then use the 19mm ring spanner on the end of the axle this side. This side has a smaller fixing. I don't know why but the end of the axle is only 19mm. So just hold that still so the axle itself doesn't turn. Come back this side and then just give it a little bit of gentle pressure and there it is. Now on this I've got the Scott Oiler tab, it's just going to be careful. Just back that off so there's a bit of space. You can tell that that washer, when you fit this you take a washer off and you put this in its place so you can see that there's plenty of movement now. That's enough. Now we're ready to adjust the wheel. First thing to do is settle the bike. Obviously the bike it needs to have weight on it. You need to have the weight of the bike on the wheel to do this because the measurement is for the chain under some level of pressure. If you imagine the swing arm on the bike, it goes up and down. It doesn't go up and down straight. It actually goes in an arc, if you think, because it's pivoted from the front. So it's an arm that effectively does that. So as the swing arm is parallel with the ground, it's at its longest. So if you jack the bike up on a lift and the wheel drops away, that's not the way to adjust the chain because when you drop it off the jack, put it back down again, the chain's going to go too tight because as the swing arm rocks forward, the chain becomes more slack. So you must make sure that with a scrambler especially, because they are jacked up a little bit over and above the bonobils, make sure that the bike's got some weight on it. And the easiest way just to settle it is to just come up, give it a couple of little pumps on the suspension, just make sure there's some weight and it settles there. Don't need anybody sitting on it or anything. Right, now the actual adjustment, it's as easy as this. Come around, man. On the back here, you've got these little notches. There you go. Now these little notches on the adjuster are the same either side as the bike and you just need to get them parallel. And the slack we're looking for in the chain, that is way too much. So we're looking for an inch and a half of up and down movement from the lowest point in the middle of the chain. Middle of the chain's about here and that's got about three inches of movement or more. That is way too much. So a little eight mil adjuster and that goes on the nut on the back. Just take a little look on here. You've got a little nut on the back or a bolt head, and on the inside, that's got a little collar, which stops it coming off. All you do, once it's securely fitted, is just adjust that back, and you'll see the whole thing slides back. There we are, two quarter turns. Now check the chain again. It's getting a little bit better. We're gonna give it two more. Now as we adjust it back, you'll see with these notches against the frame that it actually moves backwards. You can see that moving back and that's brought it up a bit. Now what I'm going to do before anything else, before you go any further, is come the other side and put in the same amount of adjustment. So come around. And all we've done was, we're going to measure it at the end, but just to give me a, a guide, I've done one, two, three, four quarter adjustment. So one full adjustment on this side. I brought the back back, the rear, sorry, the left hand side back the same as that because the wheel has to stay parallel for alignment. On the brake torque arm, on many other bikes, you have to loosen off the bolt that holds the caliper. But the great thing on the scrambler, you don't. You've got this sliding mount here, it just slides back, which is really convenient. So back to the other side, let's get some tension. So now, again, using the ratchet drop as a quarter adjustment. I'm going to do another quarter there now. Getting better. Right, I'm quite happy with that. That was three, so I'm going to pop three on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
two, three, okay. Now as I've adjusted it, I'm quite happy with that. If I take a ruler now, and we're looking for one and a half to two inches of adjustment up and down from the lowest point. So if we take the two inch there, we've got about that. So if you look at the bottom adjustment there, that's two inches, two inches there. It's got to come up to about here. That is literally just a little bit more than an inch and a half. And as a new chain, I don't want that any tighter than that. Remember what he said as well, just get the weight on, just to bed that in, check it again. That's fine, I'm comfortable with that. Now I just want to check whether I've actually got this parallel, because remember, the rear axle has to remain absolutely parallel to the swing arm pivot, so that the wheel is 90 degrees exactly in line. Wheel alignment's extremely important, and it's ever so easy. Again, you look on here, we've got these notches. Just give us quite that torch, right? I don't know if you can see it easier like that. But we've got one, two, and a third notch. And the actual swing arm body here, this piece, is just marginally behind this third one. So I'm going to check the other side. Come forward. One, two, three. And we're just inside the third one. So we are almost bang on on these. But having said that, I want to make a point here. I don't really like those adjusting notches because I don't know that they're accurately done. If you look at them, they look like they've just been hit in with a chisel. Now, I don't know whether that chisel was held in exactly the same position or not, but they probably were stamped in a machine with a die so they're all exactly the same. So they are pretty accurate. And also, rear wheel alignment is important, but it isn't laser important on something like this. If you're running a sports bike, Hayabusa, ZX10, anything that does daft mile an hour, you really need to get this right and you can use laser wheel aligners for that. And all a laser wheel aligner is, is it sits on top of the chain and it, you, poke, you poke a light on top of the chain and it runs a laser line up the chain. It's a very, very trick piece of kit, but you don't need it. You can measure it. I like to measure things. And here, and all I'm going to do is bring this ruler there. So I'm just aligning this point of the ruler with this point of the frame. So it's exactly level and coming back to this point in here this is a nice bearing face that that bolt bears against and that measurement from my angle side on is 29 28 and a half millimeters so that distance there measured between two fixed points is 28 and a half check the other side do the same that into there and it is to that face 28 and a half bang on absolutely bang on both sides now it could be it could be quite possible that after you've ridden this that that then isn't correct so we do it all up first and then we check it again because once you do up that axle nut and you squeeze everything back together that will start to possibly move things just a little bit so just tighten it up then we'll check it again Right, torque wrench onto drive. And we do it up to 62.6, but I'm just gonna go 62. Now the reason to torque this up that's important is that it's not a very big torque setting. I hear all the time on the net how people do up wheel axles to up to 100 foot pounds. I've even heard a very trusted friend of mine who works in a motorcycle garage say that he does all bike wheel nuts up to 100 because then he's sure. Honestly, I don't like that at all. And the reason I don't like it is it could just go pop right underneath you. You're putting 100 foot-pounds of torque on an axle that's designed to take 60. There are bikes out there that the torque setting is 100, so you should do it up to that. But on the Scrambler and the Bonneville and the Thruxton, this series of bikes, it's 62 foot-pounds on your torque wrench. You could do it 63, 64, that's absolutely fine. If you really belt and braces, you want to do it up 70, that's fine, but don't go much above that because it is really, really thin ice. You shouldn't be doing it. The nut itself is a, is a nylock, or it's not, not a nylock, it's a, a proper steel locking nut on a stainless axle. So it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to hold this side so the axle doesn't turn and get it in to its base. Right, now I need to hold that little tab and there we 
there we are. Five. Put four more in that. That's it. There we go. Now, obviously on mine I've got this Scottler fitting, so I'm just going to make sure that that's bent exactly back into its place and that the little Scottler tube is doing its job in its chosen little track. And there we are. Right, finally, on here, let's come around the back. Nail varnish. And there's the old nail varnish trick. Now another thing, another reason that I've never done bolts up too tight, I'm just going to scratch this off. That's the old nail varnish from before. Just scratch it off. The reason I don't bother doing anything tight because I always mark them with marker paint. So once you've done it and you're back together, take a little blob of your favourite colour, just blob it on the top there, like that. And then you want a corresponding blob just on the washer. Now the idea of that is obviously you can see the two dots aligned and as long as they stay aligned, jobs are good. That's it. Right, once the marker paint's on, that will dry in a few hours. Final check of the actual alignment itself. It's gone to, right, that's gone up to 29, so half a mil difference to just now. Check the other side. Over the top. Yep, 29 as well, perfect. So the rear wheel alignment's bang on and the chain tension's correct. And that's Nirvana, that's exactly how you want it. Nice and safe, wheel done up correctly. The torque on that, I said, is very, very crucial. Do make sure you torque it to at least 60 foot pounds, maybe a little bit more. But the marker paint does prevent you worrying. It's that belt and braces, it's that safety net. You can just do a quick visual glance of it, and you know it hasn't undone itself. And don't go doing them up to 100 foot pounds. It really isn't a safe thing to do. They're not designed to take it. It will crush the bearings and do all sorts of damage. Um, and it won't stop it coming undone. If it's gonna come undone, it will be due to something else. Okay, there we are. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments box and we'll see if we can help. That's chain adjustment on a scrambler. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.